welcome back to Game Over, guys. We're gonna speak softly in between episodes because holy shit, our throats. Ah! We are consuming nothing but uh, honey, hot sauce, and tequila. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One person's doing it smart, the other's doing it brine. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Monsieur Robitio uh, Robinio, please approach the stand and recite the oath. All right, Brian, you're up. Uh, how does it go? I swear to speak without hatred and without fear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's a little cliche, to be perfectly honest. Uh, could the witness please introduce himself uh, for the court record? Hmph! As if anybody in this courtroom does uh, not immediately recognize me. Uh, the great Monsieur Robicio Robino, uh, cutting-edge photographer and visionary. I don't just take people's pictures. I capture the very essence. Uh, je suis l'artiste. There's un pip. Uh, who? Okay. <laughs> you may have seen my works in hit magazines, Le Branche, uh, C'est Chouet. Uh, you can send, uh, I can send you tweets if you like. <laughs> tweets, because birds. Ha! Ah! Ah! What on earth is a tweet? Bird to bird communication! Come on, Falcon, it's your 19th century! <laughs> Get with the times already! Never! Uh, yes, yes, your works are very uh, impressive, Monsieur Rubinio. But uh, please, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Oh, yes. Mm. Uh, could you tell us your activities? Uh, what were they on the night of the murder? Very well, I was hired by Baron Rogoy to capture the evening's events. I arrived at 7.30. I pointed my camera and captured the beauty of the banquet in one fantastic photograph. Uh, then I billed Baron Rogoy and left. Like a true artist! <laughs> and uh, with regards to the photograph itself, uh, who did you photograph? I thought you might ask. I brought you a copy so you could all see for yourselves. Oh, very good. Uh, let's take a closer look. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> I, th I thought he... <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought he had a leash around the giraffe with his cane. <laughs> this is you, Dan. <laughs> My word. This is an exquisite picture, isn't it? So, uh, let's see. Who do we have here? In the middle, we see uh, Baron Rigoy, the lion who hosted the event. Yes. On the left, we see... Uh, mm, that guy. The, the meow, the father of the defendant, Dame Kathleen. And finally, we see the, the housemaid, uh, Culine de Hot, who I suspect may have snuck into the picture uninvited. <laughs> Photobomb. <laughs> As you can see, two people are clearly absent from the photograph. The first is the victim, Monsieur Renoui. Uh, the second is the defendant, Dame Kathleen de Miao. Quite suspicious, wouldn't you agree? Even for you to say, Falcon. Just a moment, Monsieur Robington. You cocksucker. You dirty, lapinous piece of shit. This proves nothing. So, the defendant and the victim were not photographed to the, the others. That does not mean that they are in the Jardin together at the point. Hold your horses, Falcon. I'm not done yet. Oh. The prosecution may continue. Uh, behind the photograph of the subjects, we see a wall clock boop, 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 with boop, the time boop. set at uh, 7.30. Excuse me? That, Action. that clock has hands. Now, why is that time significant? Well, as Inspector Valerti told us earlier, that was the exact time the murder took place. What? Do you see, Falcon? You're stupid. Every <laughs> subject has an alibi at the time of the murder, save for Dame Catalina herself. You're stupid. Falcon! Something is fishy! In the jail cell, Dame Catalina told us that she was present when the photograph took place. But I don't see her in Robinio's photograph! Ah, uh, yes, Robington is rabid vermin. Uh, that's true! I can't use Dame Catalina's testimony as evidence. It has too little weight. Uh, if I want to prove that Monsieur Robinio's photograph is not a valid piece of evidence, I would have to dish out evidence of my own. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the Puffin. Very well. The defense may proceed. <laughs> it's a waste of time, if you ask me. Photographs are rock-solid evidence. <laughs> like my cock when I'm in heat. They like the statement to question. Uh, <clears throat> 7 p.m. Monsieur Robinho, hold it! <laughs> you say that you arrived at 7 o'clock. Brian. 
Give or take a couple of minutes, yes. How do you know that you arrived at 7? Well, the clock in my house read 6.45 when I left, and the walk to Chateau Crignier was about 15 minutes. I don't claim to be a flawless timekeeper, but I am a professional, and I always stick to an appointment. Do you have another question? How long did it take you to set up your camera? Took perhaps uh, 25 minutes to find a shooting location, mm -hmm. but uh, put together the camera and ready the film. Where's... Nope. Nope. Facebook. Oh. This is Grenouille. Oh. Okay. So you arrived at 7, and the photograph took place at 7.30, and you spent 25 minutes setting up. That leaves 5 minutes unaccounted for. Falcon, surely you aren't suggesting that Monsieur Rubinio did something uh, nefarious in this small window of time. Shit. What could he be doing? Smoking a cigar? Perhaps he's missing clock hands! Clock hands? Oh. Maybe. We? Oui? Objection! I most certainly am. This discrepancy is of the utmost importance to the case. Uh, well, I probably spent two minutes or so talking to Baron Rogo, and he took a great interest in my camera. I see, but that still leaves three minutes remaining. I spent perhaps two minutes using the bathroom facilities. Falcon, do you seriously expect us to sit here and uh, uh, listen to your nickel and dime, Monsieur Rubinio, about every second? I must agree, this is quite unnecessary, Monsieur Falcon. Please stop that at once. Oh, the movie. Do you have another question about. Uh, no. Photograph. Camera. Photograph is in question. Let's take a closer look at this phonograph. I wanted to question about You're the, the clock judge. hands. You were the judge voice. Oh, shit. Let's uh, be French now. Are you <laughs> mocking me? Why is it black and white? Uh, just to clarify, Monsieur Robignon, photographs are a direct reflection of reality, are they not? Uh, that is correct. The photographic process leaves no room for bias or inaccuracies. That is most curious, uh, because I see a mistake. A mistake impossible. I just told you, monsieur, the camera is a perfect, unbiased device. The photographs it produce are flawless. Uh, Falcon, I'm not seeing any mistakes. Perhaps you could be a bit more specific in your wrongness. Certainement. You flea-bitten swine. Take that! The clock in this photograph! There is something not right about it. Hmm? Well, isn't that convenient? But if I see something wrong with the, uh, uh, key piece of evidence that implicates his client. Don't give me that cocky tone, you, you cocky sucker. Monsieur Rabington, you piece of shit. <laughs> you shit-eating, fucking own, humping everything in sight, motherfucker. Do you I kiss have... your mother with that mouth? Because I Fuck did. Fuck you, I do. I have evidence that there's something wrong with the clock <laughs> in that picture. Where are those ends? Eh. Objection. The photo clock <laughs> clearly Objection. shows the clock's ends pointing at 7 and 6. That much is self-evident. Ding! Which is most curious, because the clock in the lounge of Chateau Crenier has no hands. Uh, uh, order! Has no hands. The clock is merely a decorative piece. A talking item. Feel free to ask Baron Rogoy or his housemaid okay. if you have doubts. Monsieur Robignon, how do you explain this discrepancy? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. There must be some sort of mistake. Uh, my camera is flawless. There is no mistake, monsieur. Your photograph depicts something that does not exist in the real world. Uh, maybe there's an error in the printing process. I think the only error here is the thinking process of the <gasps> prosecution. An error precisely where the clock's end should be. Please, monsieur, do not patronize us. Allow me to offer a plausible explanation. You, monsieur Robignon, 
edited this photograph. E edited? I am no expert, but I suspect that you used paint or ink to carefully put hands upon the clock. It would have been a simple task, considering that the clock face was bare. One could even speculate that you specifically chose to include a endless clock in the photograph just to simplify the editing process. <laughs> I, uh... Falcon, uh... your reasoning is absurd. Why would the witness do such a thing? Is it not obvious? By showing the photograph to have taken place at precisely 7.30, it clears all photograph subjects of suspicion. In other words, Monsieur Robignon created the perfect alibi. I know I said that's wrong. Shut up, Robignon, you puffin. Fuck. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm being mean. I didn't mean to be so mean. Mm. <laughs> of course, this raises further questions. Who is the witness protecting? And why? Was Monsieur Robignon coerced? Bribed? Threatened? <gasps> Enough silence! Let's hear some answers, Monsieur Robignon! Fine! You've got me! I'm guilty! I did it all! Oh. Oh. You did it? You're confessing to the murder of Monsieur Grenouille? What? No, 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 no! I have no idea who killed the frog, and I'm just admitting that I'm guilty of producing fraudulent photographs. I was ordered to. Uh, make changes to the printed photographs, and yes, that includes adding hands to the clock. You were ordered? Damn it! You were ordered by whom? I dare not say. Monsieur... <laughs> <laughs> Stop waving that gavel around, Brian. <laughs> Monsieur Robinho, I strongly advise you to question answer the defense's question. You have pledged to speak without fear, after all. With respect, Judge, I fear his claws more than I fear the punishment <gasps> of the justice system. I shall name no names. His claws? Did you hear that, Falcon? Oh god, Sparrows, and I forgot you were there. Damn right, I'm tiny! That is most unfortunate. Monsieur Robinho, we cannot and shall not torture names out of you. We don't live under the Ancien Regime, after all. <coughs> but since you have admitted to falsifying evidence, then we cannot keep you on the stand as a witness. Take your leave. You shall be charged with perjury in due course. I can't protest, that's the least I deserve for my failure as an artist. Have a good day, messieurs. Intruder! Burger come into! Yeah. So the uh, cla clocked hands are painted on. So what? It doesn't matter. The photograph still depicts Dean Catalina's absent, close to the time of the murder, and that's significant. Don't be dense. Monsieur Robington, if the photograph is not completely genuine, then it cannot be considered reliable evidence. Why not? It's still a portrayal of uh, the night's events. Because if we accept that one part of the picture was edited, then we must accept the possibility that the other parts were too. It is possible that Dame Cataline was painted out. Even worse, it is possible that another person was painted in. We know that the witness was trying to cover for someone, or uh, possibilities must be accounted for. Someone with claws. I don't know who it could be. Who could that be? So what are you saying, Falcon? That housemaid paid off the photographer? Or was it Senior Portier Meow, perhaps? That's stupid. You're stupid. I don't think so, you piece of... I hate you so goddamn much. Uh, the housemaid lacks the means of motive, and it wouldn't make sense for Senior Portier to implicate his own daughter. Well, surely you're not suggesting that the honest and beloved Baron... Uh, that guy. Rogoy. Rogoy! <laughs> it's like a glyph. So he tried to frame Dan Cataline. Because that would be the most outlandish theory yet. The Baron is a pillar in our community. He would never do such a thing. Ow. That's Brian! That's my fucking bad name. Mr. <laughs> Rabington, I am not here to throw accusations at your stupid face. That's the job of you, the prosecutor. <laughs> However... Right. Perhaps I should offer my opinion. <laughs> uh, Baron, it's not a time for your witness testimony yet. Like I give a fuck. So you would think, prosecutor, and yet I see my good reputation getting tarnished by your incompetence. <laughs> uh, incompetence? 
Indeed, let us proceed with witness questioning. It's fine. Is that fine with you, Judge? Yes, I suppose that's fine. Very good. And I trust that the defense has no objections. No, no objections here. Fantastic. Oh, but before I forget, I pledge to speak without fear and prejudice, etc. Etc. <laughs> now, prosecutor, ask me about what I witnessed over the course of the evening. Th th that's not how this is supposed to go. <laughs> but, uh, okay. Uh, Baron, uh, the night of the, uh... The initial dinner went magnificently! <laughs> When the photographer arrived, Monsieur Grenouille left to visit the garden. Dame Cataline followed behind him moments later. Seigneur Poutois, Monsieur Rabinio, and myself were engaged in conversation, so we paid her no mind. Mm. After the photographer had left, my housemaid left to go find Monsieur Grenouille and Dame Cataline. That would be when I heard her cry for help. Thank you, Baron. I think we all know the story from here, and apparently I'm not needed at all to ask the question, so I'm going to go take a break. I would like to cross-examine the witness. You're insane. Do you doubt my integrity, Gaston? I am just here to uncover the truth, Baron. Very well, then. Hit me with your best shot. <laughs> Let us establish with absolute certainty that I, Baron Rogoy, am an honest man. The defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Okay. <laughs> this dinner. The dinner did not go magnificent. <laughs> I have questions. What should we ask about the jardin or the house? Like everything. Yeah, we don't know the shit dinner about didn't him. go. There's no utensils. They're on the whole girl. I. Why did Monsieur Grenouille leave to visit the garden? I believe he wanted some fresh air. Mistake did not sit well with him, I fear. Oh, I see. Uh, but that is quite coincidental timing, isn't it? How so? Well, Monsieur Grenouille felt sick and left the room just after the photographer arrived and just before the murder occurred. One might draw a link between the food and the sickness. Hold on, Falcon. Surely you aren't suggesting that uh, Monsieur Grenouille's food was poisoned in some way. No, no, no. Uh, there is nothing to indicate the poison. I just find the timing somewhat puzzling. There's nothing puzzling about it. Monsieur Grenouille always had a soft stomach. It's really no surprise that he couldn't keep down a rare steak. What was your relation to Monsieur Grenouille prior to his demise? We were business partners. Monsieur Grenouille, Seigneur Pretois de Mau, and myself all owned a third share in an up-and-coming railway company. Excuse the classness of this question, uh, but that means that you and Seigneur Pretois would now own half the company each, correct? Correct. I suppose that's a slight glimmer of benefit that arose from this foul situation. <laughs> but, monsieur, you must understand that monsieur Grand, we and I were friends as much as we were business associates. I mourn the man's passing. Uh, but of course. Uh, we will perhaps pose another question on the next episode of Game Over Geese. Guys. Geese. Geese. Mech. <laughs> Game Over Guillotine. <laughs> Clenadine. Sedan's in the